The title of this evening is Meniscal Implant, an 18-year experience from a galaxy not so far away. There are patients with knee meniscal injuries so severe that only excision and meniscectomy remain that option. These patients often experience rapid deterioration of their joints, and meniscal tissue, meniscal tissue implants, or transplants in this case, are but one approach that is infrequently discussed but can lead to excellent outcomes. In fact, is this a cure? Possibly not. However, it can significantly reduce the progression of osteoarthritis. In this session, we are going to work with and learn from uh, individuals who have an immense history, decades of experience uh, with, uh, with meniscal transplantation. And it is with my great honor and pleasure to be able to introduce to you um, Dr. Edmundo Bruman, who is an alumni of McMaster Orthopedics and certainly a well-respected orthopedic surgeon uh, working in Chihuahua, Mexico. Edmundo, welcome. Thank you, Mo. That is always nice to get back to Canada. Um, and this is a very special evening for me and for our group since we have uh, learned that uh, Mo just become the uh, president of the Canadian Orthopedic Association and we, we are very proud to be his friend. This afternoon we will be presenting to you guys some headlines on uh, meniscal transplant. It's my great honor to present Dr. Octavio Carmona, who is my partner and who is professor of the University of uh, Chihuahua, and, who, and we will be uh, giving the introduction on this topic. Octavio? Hi, I'm Dr. Carmona. I'm glad to, to be invited with you tonight. And um, as soon as you uh, want, we could start the, the video with the introduction. Okay, let's do this. Can you guys see my screen? Yes, sir. So this, this is a presentation about meniscal transplant. Uh, so today we're gonna be talking about uh, meniscal transplant. This is uh, some kind of Star Wars fan. Uh, so this is uh, the theme that we chose for today. Uh, the meniscectomy was one of the most practiced surgeries in the 20th century. I even remember some of our teachers uh, that tell a story that they had uh, like these races in, in, in surgery to see who could take out more fast the meniscus uh, and sometimes of lesions. In 1948, Fairbanks uh, described the, the, the degenerative changes after these procedures for the, menis uh, the meniscectomy, so it led to osteoarthritis. 1969, Aikuchi described the arthroscopic repair, and 20 years later, Milichowski, that's that's a guy who has a lot of experience and a lot of uh, case reports and a series of cases of meniscal transplant allografts. So, uh, in Mexico, this was uh, just a dream. So, in 1998, a uh, group of people had uh, some they, they did some criteria to do it, and in 2002, uh, Chihuahua, with uh, Dr. Baruman and some other orthopedic surgeons, did the first meniscal transplant in, in Mexico and, I believe, in Latin America. Tw October 12, in 2002, was the first transplant. It was a medical doctor um, up here of Chihuahua and went really well. That uh, picture there where uh, you saw with Dr. Berman in another country, I believe it was Ecuador, uh, where they did the first meniscal transplant there. And it's been 18 years to now. We have uh, polished the, the technique. And 2012, uh, so here's a, an example of one of these uh, meniscal transplant techniques. You can see there, uh, we use an allograft that's from uh, a tissue bank from Guadalajara. Uh, we have a lot of techniques that you could use. This is the most simple one, which is uh, only uh, soft tissues. We use the aimer uh, for the tunnels uh, of the ACL reconstruction kit. It's just so basic. That's where uh, we're aiming for the posterior horn, for the meniscus. Then we pass uh, some a, a wire 
to, to mark down where the, the exit point is and to introduce there the, the sutures that were attached to the meniscus. There's a, there's a wire. And we're going to pull it out through the portal to keep this like really, really minimal invasive. That's the meniscus we're going to, to implant on the medial side. And that's where we're introducing the meniscus. As you can see, the patient had a previous meniscectomy almost totally. So he's a good candidate. And there's obviously there's some criteria now, but uh, he was a good candidate. There's an introduction of the, the meniscus and we use uh, meniscal sutures that have a doubled uh, a doubled needle. We use a Ferguson cannula to, to use the like as a naming device and we just pull it down through the capsule and attach it to the capsule. And you, as you can see, you can do all of this uh, minimal invasively. The meniscus, as, as you can see, has a part uh, marked and superior, uh, the part of the posterior, anterior, and the medial part. And that's where it's implanted. So how did we get there? I uh, now leave you with Dr. Baruman, who's gonna, who's gonna talk about patient's evaluation. Okay, uh, thank you, thank you, Octavio. Uh, patient evaluation is, is, is the first step to choose a good patient uh, for uh, a meniscal transplant. You have to test the uh, McMurray and, and Apple test in order to find out um, if the patient is having pain and, and how's uh, range of motion and so on. Um, it's important to, to, to see the size uh, to get the size of the meniscus because the bone bank is going to ask you um, how big or how small the meniscus has to be. If you're going to fail, fail in bigger instead of shorter because it's easier to work with a bigger meniscus than with the shoulder. Uh, you have to take in consideration if the patient has meniscectomy. Um, the planning of the surgery, we use uh, MRI and a CT scan so we can measure uh, where we're gonna implant the, the new meniscus and we send the measures to, to the bank tissue. And uh, so they could send us something real, really similar. So with this surgery, um, you have to take into account uh, what type of arthrosis, the degree of, uh, of the arthrosis the patient has, if he has a meniscectomy total or is it partial, uh, how, how much pain does the patient have? Uh, the alignment as you can, you can do a combined surgery with osteotomies and meniscal transplant, but that's, that's something else. So we're, Dr. Berumen is back with us and we'll, we'll continue. That's what, that's what we call a teamwork. And um, which, uh, which is the technique that we should use? We have a, a technique that has the meniscus attached to a piece of bone and, and other ones that you can use a bar or like the Octavio show you only with soft tissue union. And, and there is this very nice technique when uh, the bone bag send you these bars with the hole in the middle that you can put the suture through and that will be easier to handle in order to get that cylinder inside of the tibial plateau. It is important as you have your two horns secure to start pushing the meniscus out in order to get a good fixation. Uh, and it's important as well to leave a, a rim of the meniscus so you don't have a protrusion. We have moved for, forward from there and we, we started a few years to do uh, um, a medial uh, or lateral plateau uh, transplant with a meniscus. Uh, perhaps these are the future in terms of uh, biolog biological uh, uh, total knee in the future that it can be done using some of these techniques where you can take not only the cartilage and the meniscus as well. See, there are cases where, uh, even though that we try to save, to save every single piece of the meniscus, it cannot be repaired. And those cases are gonna um, uh, have uh, arthritis and wear of the knee joint. And, and that's a, a big, big problem. Uh, therefore, 
in order to prevent that arthritis or to uh, slow it down, um, you can do, do a meniscal transplant and that can help. It. Obviously, the best patient is a patient that has no arthritis, no wear and tear. Um, but um, as, as today, you only do a meniscal transplant when you have a patient with knee pain, there is a still uh, a question if uh, you do a meniscal transplant uh, prophylactic that will prevent you from having arthritis. We haven't been able to answer that question yet, but perhaps in the future we will be able to, to realize that. This is the other technique we, where we use a keyhole type of bone bar and that can be slide in place in position and that way we, we don't have to, to secure the anterior horn because that meniscus is attached to the bone bar and that way we can, as soon as we get it in, it's nice and stable. Particularly when you use a technique in, in form of a keyhole, that way that uh, bone, bar is bone bar is secure right away. And as soon as you get that bar in, then the first part is to apply one of these features that go in and out with uh, long needles. I've, we found that that's the simplest and easiest technique where you can hold it right in the middle, right in the middle, and in and, and that way uh, you can start your working your way back and forth. And when you do a meniscal transplant, you have to realize that uh, you can use in and out techniques for the body. For the posterior horn, you're gonna have to use all inside techniques. And for the anterior horn, you're gonna have to use out-in techniques in order to repair. So you have to, to be able to do two, the three techniques in, in order to fix the meniscus right in place. Alignment is a, is a good um, question. If you have a knee that is in valgus from viral deformity, you per, you're gonna have to correct that before you do your meniscal transplant, otherwise it's gonna fail. Uh, uh, again, uh, obviously, uh, when you have a ligamentous injury, uh, that's another issue, something that you have to, to repair way before you do your, uh, your meniscal transplant, because otherwise, having an unstable knee and putting a meniscal will only lead you to a pretty bad result. Um, in those cases, um, you have to... Uh, to find out, you know, what are, what are you expecting? What we have learned is that doing a meniscal transplant will uh, delay a total knee between 15 to, to 10 to 15 years. That's why we keep pushing uh, and this technique to another uh, met, another uh, areas where we can do a transplant of the, the facet of the uh, uh, tibial plateau with the meniscus. Is the video, video not running? Um, uh, this, this patient got one of those tibial plateaus uh, and meniscus transplant. And you can have, you see, he, can, he, he has a pretty good range of motion. He can walk and uh, having very little discomfort. Uh, uh, in, in those cases, um, uh, you have to measure very well the tibial plateau so it fits perfectly. Uh, and, uh, and the meniscus should be attached to the tibial plateau, and that way you can have uh, uh, a good fixation. Particularly in those cases where you have a big wear or a, or a bad fracture of the tibial plateau that cannot be reconstructed otherwise, particularly in young patients that have a lot, many years to live and, and, and can have a pretty um, bad outcome if you, do, you don't do, do uh, something. Total knees on those cases might not be the best choice because uh, they uh, they are gonna uh, wear and uh, the prosthesis is gonna get loose faster. Therefore, in young patients with those injuries, we try to um, give them the chance of doing a meniscal transplant and uh, and perhaps uh, will be a, a way to to delay for many years uh, this. Uh, this technique. Arthroscopy has moved to another areas, and, and we are always trying to, to find out uh, new areas where we can uh, and apply even in small uh, uh, joints. Um, uh, we had uh, years ago 
this patient that plays the cello for uh, for uh, the uh, local uh, university symphonic. And you see how this fracture is completely moved the medial epicondyle. And uh, what we try to do on this uh, reconstruction is to put the, the pieces back in place and fix it with cantilevers of tool, trying to uh, uh, produce less trauma to that joint, particularly for a, a young shallow player and that otherwise would be very difficult for her to go back. And we put it back in place, we apply cantilevered screws and fix it uh, in uh, their area. And, uh, and you can see a couple of the x-rays trans up where we apply those three cantilevered screws. And uh, you, uh, after, after all, this is all the hardware that the patient has. Otherwise, she will have to have probably an osteotomy with the electron and so on. And you can see the post op x-rays there. And you see afterwards uh, the uh, reconstruction, so the CAT scan and reconstruction uh, showing that there is a good fixation and good reconstruction of the elbow joint with very minimal uh, approaches just with teeny tiny puncture wounds uh, to fix and, uh, and put back in place that. Uh, and, uh, and you can see at the beginning that she was having a hard time to get her range of motion back in place. But um, as she was trying in rehab to get back her range of motion, next visit, she was able to, to, uh, to move it very well and, and having a full range of motion of that right elbow that it was very important for her in order to get back to her uh, cello uh, play. And, uh, and you can see the range of motion right there. She, she has full pronation and supination and have movement quite well. And uh, you can see her play the cello. Thank you very much. I guess you were you were having we were wondering why are we showing an elbow uh, case? Well, just because of the music. And uh, Mohit, thank you very much for the invitation, and we will be very happy to uh, answer any questions that you might have.